explain how this we've gotten to this point and how you pay a player. What was it like in the 70s or 80s, your best knowledge, and then where we are now? Because, you know, there are coaches who don't know if somebody's being paid. If an agent gets to the family right away in high school or the, the player, the coach may not know unless the player, you know, tells him. But the 80s, 90s, and where we are now and how uh, players get paid, got paid. It was it, it was uh, it was different, but the same in a way. I mean, the, the, we we joke now about you know the seventies and eighties were the good old days of cheating, where the player actually got the money. Um, you know, now now it's people who are are, are brokering the player. But in the seventy you know sixties, seventies, and eighties, uh, it was more booster activity. You had agents involved. Uh, there were players that would sell their you know they'd sell their tickets. Uh, they would they would use tickets to barter for uh, maybe getting a, a good deal on a on a car from a local car dealer things like that. You had stuff all that kind of stuff that went on. But it, it's kind of it's kind of funny to hear people talk like you know UCLA and you remember in the 60s and 70s Sam Gilbert was their big booster that was that was providing extra benefits to all the players. That's a known thing, and the NCAA knew it. They just wouldn't do anything about it. Uh, you know, you remember what happened at SMU with football. All that stuff went on. Now it's more in the in the agent realm. Uh, you've got stuff going on. There's some shoe company involvement, but it's not as I don't think it's as big as, as some people think. Uh, and then there's the AAU circuit where they're able to funnel money through through AAU programs. And just like uh, like money was funneled through uh, through nonprofit churches and the Cam Newton thing. You know, the idea that this doesn't go on in football, and I know football people go, hey, don't look at us. I, I, but come on now. Like, if, if the FBI weren't involved, Dan, uh, basketball would be saying the same thing that football is saying right now, is they'd be saying it's not as widespread. Come on, it's not. It, 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 of course, a few people cheat, but it's not widespread. If you got uh, paid, you would you tell me? Of course not. Why, why would anybody do that? Um, it was, a, you know, back then it was a totally different time. I mean, we all knew people that there were, you, you knew the stories too, Dan, you were in school at the same time I was. So, uh, there was a story of an SEC player that, uh, that they had set up Coke machines for the guy. So he had a key to the Coke <laughs> machine. He would go and open the Coke, all the Coke machines and take all the money out. And, uh, there was all kinds of stuff going on back then. And, and we think those stories now are cute and funny. Yeah. And some of the, some of the old time coaches that are out on the speaking circuits, they all talk about. They all make jokes about it, um, but it's a different time now, and and people aren't, uh, you know, like Sean Miller, like this stuff. This stuff has been going on forever, and the NCAA knows it has been going on forever. They just couldn't. It's like uh, it's like insider trading or or something like that. You know, you know it's going on, or mortgage fraud. You know it's going on. You don't know exactly who's doing it. And uh, and but the FBI now is showing us exactly who's doing it with regard to one agent. This is just Andy Miller. It's just his agency. Um, there are a bunch of other agents out there. And uh, and so the idea that this is is not going on in football, basketball and the like, of course it is. Of course it is. There's too much money. You know, we can't have a multi-billion dollar industry and say the players can only have their expenses and expect that it's going to stop there. It's not. And, uh, and it would be a pipe dream to pretend that it would. And, and the NCAA, like, kind of looks at this like, wait a minute, you know, this is, this is a pristine thing. And, <laughs> and come on, man. I mean, you guys signed all these contracts. You guys brought all this money into it. You guys signed with the shoe companies, not the players. You did this. You're using the players as billboards. And then you want to say, wait a minute, how did this become? <laughs> Where's all this money grabbing coming from? I can't believe these greedy players want more than a scholarship. It's crazy. If I was offered money in college, I would tell everybody that I was offered money. If you were offered money, what do you mean? Oh, you, you mean now? Yeah, uh, that would mean I'm a good player if I got, like, I had to pay money, Jay. I, I didn't get offered money, so that's, you know, that's why. I mean, you. Well, that's, that's the difference between you and me, Dan. You got paid and you were worth it. No, I did not. Oh, get paid. oh, you didn't get paid. I wish I, I wish I had gotten paid. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, but I will tell you this: that I don't know. I don't know any good player. I don't know any good player that was strictly eligible in in, in any era. You cannot live by these rules because it. What it does is it makes normal human behavior illegal. You cannot do it. And there, there's there's no player that ever played in in college that did not take a free meal, that did not take something that would technically make that player ineligible. Now, they may have to pay back a, a, a little bit of money and then could regain their eligibility, 
But as a technical matter, I don't know any any good player that, that that's strictly eligible. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.